Hi, welcome to another 101 Extended. Well, if you watched Board Game Breakfast, you saw on the 101 that we are now doing Rum and Bones. And you saw how we were priming. But let's go back outside and see the full video on priming so we can go over a little more in detail some of the tips that, that we have for you. And then we'll come back here and we'll get right to the table and start taking a look at everything that we had primed and what our plans are. Okay, as you can see, I'm using a pizza box here. I tacked everything down and I broke the ends of this so I can spray. And I also tend to um, diagonally put everything. You want to do your priming outside. It's not safe to do it inside. Uh, if you do it inside, you're taking a risk um, beyond belief. I brought another figure out here and there's a reason for that. Uh, he's out here because I'm going to show you that the proper way to prime something, you should be six inches away and you should be just getting enough enough uh, aerosol on there to just barely cover it because you don't want to take the detail out. And I want to show you what happens when you do take the detail. As you can see, this little guy here, he's pretty detailed, but he could be pretty messed up pretty quickly if you put too much primer on them, you're already in the hole. And that's why uh, you hear a lot of people talking about watered down paints and stuff like that. So, ideally, you want to be six inches away, shake up your paint really, really good, and short burst. Six inches away, short burst. And you can see that everything's getting covered without having to take and move the guys off the thing. And there we go. That's pretty easy. Nice short burst and you got good coverage there. So again, shake your can up real good six inches away. You don't want to be any closer than six inches away. Make sure that you're constantly short bursts. Better to get too little than too much. Another, turn your box, another short burst. Turn again, short burst. And as you can see, we got everybody painted. And make sure that you're outside when you do this. It, this stuff is fatal and lethal. And there you go. Now, I was talking about these two guys. I'm gonna take one guy and I'm gonna uh, spray paint him from a safe distance, which is six inches. I'm just gonna turn them, I don't have them nailed down or anything like that so there we go now I'm gonna take this guy right here and since I'm a little more profound with this I am going to blast this guy pretty good up close alright so we're gonna let both those dry and then I'm gonna show you when we're all done What's the difference of too much primer and just the right amount of primer? So let's head back inside and I'll see you guys there. Okay, now that we're inside, I wanted to show you one of the figures that if you spray too close, this guy still isn't dry. Still isn't dry. But let me just turn this here. There we go. You can see it's all clogging up because you spray too close. You want to keep that six inch distance. I mean, if you get close and, and it will take away all the detail. And what's the point of painting them at that point? Then all you're doing is painting a blob and you're ruining your figure. So like I said, short burst, keep far away from there. I mean, uh, keep um, six inches away and you'll see that everything works out perfectly. So let's take a look. These guys are all dry 
And as you can see, I've already pulled a couple out, but this is just a little muddy putty. And it's great because it's reusable, it doesn't dry up. Just put it in a plastic bag and you're good to go. And you just stick them down. And as you can see, then you get around and you get your guy properly all nice and primed. And just those short bursts, you can see that we kept some detail. But we'll be talking about that very shortly. So now that we got these guys all taken care of, you're going to want to take them all off. And remember, take the muddy putty off the bottom of the, the body there, or it'll just stick. And the best thing is, is that these, these pizza boxes, I mean, listen, I got three kids and that's all they do is eat pizza. So I make sure that they save all the boxes. So it really works out. Or just have, or get yourself um, just any cardboard box. Go to Publix or Winn-Dixie or whatever um, shopping store that you have and just take and go in the back and grab a couple boxes, cut them up with an X-Acto knife, or just leave them whole, however you want to use them. And you'll find that spraying on that outside like we said it just is a perfect combination now we also talked about getting too much spray on and I'm gonna pull the guy over here in a second let's get this box out of here but before we pull him over let's talk about our work area that's something that we haven't had a chance to really talk about so I'm gonna to try to move this around so you get a good idea this here, um, like I told you in the video when we were in the store, you can get yourself one of those nice little thick uh, uh, mats. But my favorite thing is I took a couple of old, old D&D maps that I don't use anymore. Or I try to get myself that something a big area. I took it down to Office Depot and I had them laminate it. Now, why would I go to that extent? Because sometimes if I'm not using this or if I want to use this to mix paints, it keeps everything wet. It holds the water. It doesn't absorb the water and dry out the paint as quick. It's a nice flat surface, and I like the little bit of laminate. I apologize for the shine, but for these purposes, that's fine. The other thing is, is you can go down to Home Depot and get yourself just a simple piece of tile. Um... Tile works excellent when mixing paints, and we're going to talk about um, watering down paints and and um, thinning out your paint so you get a nice thin coat. Remember, the whole idea is to keep as much as the detail as we possibly can. Okay, that guy there, and if you remember these guys, we're going to be using them very shortly. The other thing I told you to pick up is some of these palettes. They're especially good when you're using the Americana and you have a nice little area to just put a couple daub, daubs of water in there. And it's another thing that holds the paint very well and they're very easy to clean if I clean them. Your brushes, got to make sure you have your brushes, all the different type of brushes that you're going to think you're going to use. Usually I have a ton more paints, but we're just going to have a couple there and usually a nice clean cup of water. But as you can see, I've been doing a little work out here, so uh, obviously that's not clean water. Paper towels, they're perfect uh, for what we're going to be doing. Um, you're going to want to dry, when we start talking about dry brush, you're going to want to have some paper towels. And plus, after you rinse out your brushes, you're going to want to dry them off real well and make sure that you get every bit of the paint out. Because again, um, like I've said, if your paintbrush is this, very tight and very controlled, but should you, and here's a bad brush that I've had for 10 years, that you can actually see how we're losing uh, let's see if we can show that that we lose lost some of the tip and why because the paint has built up in this area from not being cleaned properly and the bristles instead of being tight where you can control it they expand and become like this so when you get paint on there and you go to paint a area it's a lot wider than you think 
because you have a hair here, a hair there, and that'll cause complete disruption and it'll stop your control. You will not have control of your paintbrush. So we've got all the things in place. So let's start talking about these um, bone doubles. Well, the first thing I, I do is when I start a paint project like this, I split it into a couple of groups. Um, if there's bad guys and heroes, I'll split them into two sides because usually the bad guys are basically the same color scheme. And since the bone devils are basically undead, I figured I'd keep them all in the same, uh, paint them first. Now I'm not going to be doing the captains. The captains and, and the, the main crew are going to be done the same time I do the well port. And also, uh, talking about the rum and bones uh, paint job here that we're going to be doing, this is strictly the box set. What you get in the retail box, not the Kickstarter, no extras, this that, and the other. Whatever you get inside that box, that's what we're going to be painting. Now, um, I, the thing that you want to do from this point here is to do some research. And research is always uh, important because you kind of want to have a game plan. So usually I would take a pen and paper and I would go on Board Game Geek or, or search the internet, you know, look up Rum and Bones and try to come up with a paint scheme that I want to have. Now, the book really doesn't give you much. Now, let's just turn this so we can take a look at it. Um, but... There were a couple pictures that I saw that we can kind of work with. And, okay. So, here's the, bo the bosun for um, the... Move these brushes, I apologize. Here is the bosun for the... Uh, for the Bone Devils, which is this fellow right here. And as you can see, he has a purple pants um, a brownish, brownish uh, boot, a blue, I would say that's a blue candor uh, type of uh, jacket, uh, bone of course, that's going to be easy, and then we're just gonna, even though it's showing a little greenish here, but we're just gonna make that silver. So the game plan is, and of course his beard, which is an orange, a bright orange, so we can, we can do that pretty easily even though it's in there pretty good. So there's his beard, as we could see. We're going to make this silver. We're going to paint his pants, his pant area. We're going to paint that silver. Brown for his belt. And this is important when to get a really good prime job on it where that's not thick, because if it's thick, then we're not going to be able to see the areas that we need to paint. And of course, his jacket, we're going to go with a very nice blue and we're going to highlight all this. So we've got that figured out and um, pretty much that takes care of him. But what about the other guys? Uh, well here we have this particular gentleman who is a crew member and he seems pretty simple so we're just going to paint his body the basic bone, silver for the sword, which will probably be um, a lead belcher in Citadel or a gunmetal in Americana. And I'll have a list for this next week when, when you see these uh, pa uh, figures finally painted on Board Game Breakfast and then you come over to extend, extend it. I'm going to show you step by step how we're going to paint these. Um, we're going to mess with some of this today, but um, I'll explain how that's going to happen very shortly. Uh, and just going through, and I went on Board Game Geek, there really wasn't a lot of material. And, you know, having a picture like this sometimes helps because it gives you an idea what you're going to do with the crew or the captain. And, uh, you know, just search, the, keep searching the internet and you might find anything, or, you know, just go by this video. Now, with with the main crew, as you can see, we have great pictures that we can go from. And on both sides, that's going to be very, very easy for us to ascertain. But to start, 
I'll have a complete breakdown and show you step by step on how we will actually do that. But the main thing that we want to cover today is some of the techniques that I'm going to mention during painting these guys and how we're going to apply them and how to use those particular skills such as watering down a paint, dry brushing, using a wash. These things are all going to come into um, very important play here and that's what we're going to do today. So why don't we get right to it. Now another great thing to have is you can go down to a flea market and get one of these just about anywhere and that's this magnifying glass. It's just great for checking out details. I don't know how this will show up on camera but you can see especially if you're painting and it has a nice little clip here you can clip his little base in if you wanted to and move the thing around and that way that stays there while you paint. Now I'm left handed so you guys gotta bear with me you could use the right handed side and of course mo this actually moves these I, I got this for like two bucks at a flea market so let's talk about dry brushing real quick if you remember last week I told you guys to get these blocks because we're gonna practice on these blocks first some of these techniques before before we do this on in, on a miniature and the reason that you get these it's just good to get a feel for what kind of strokes that you can have and getting a good feel uh, for the consistency that you would need so I'm gonna show you a couple things here and I'm going to use my fan brush which is a number two for those who are curious I'm gonna take a little bit of white paint because that's gonna really going to show us what's happening. Now if you notice I have the white paint on my brush but I'm actually painting it off my brush. And then I'm going to fold over my paper towel and I'm going to pull it and pull it and I'm going to keep on trying to get it off my brush. Now dry brush means exactly what you what what it is. It's a dry brush. Okay? And what it is is to bring out raised areas. You take and all you do is go and hit the high points. This is going to give depth to your model and bring out certain points. Now like there's a little wood missing here so so let's take a look at that. See how that's perfectly rounded? and it just hits the high points this is what's going to give that 3D type of feel to your model because you have the underneath layer and then you're able to lay a very thin area onto your onto your model and onto the high points it gives it 3D it gives it depth and that's what we're trying to treat. Remember this guy, the owl? Now by doing this, we're gonna give his nose, because his nose, see, if you just saw it was black, now all of a sudden you can see his nose and you can see all the curvatures and how imperfect his nose is because we're able to dry brush to high points. That is a proper dry brush. Okay, so hopefully you guys got some of those blo uh, blocks to practice that. Now let me show you what is not a proper dry brush and when you have too much ink on your ink paint on your thing. You may just dry it off a little bit, but when you come here you can see it's not because your brush is still very very wet and you see how you start taking out some of the top see the difference nice nice highlight of the color very thin just laying on the edge 
compared to having too much paint on your brush where it extends it highlight the edge but it also painted all over all the work that we may have done so taking as much paint off is very very key and using a paper towel and sometimes even just taking and you can see it you're not going to be able to see it with this camera but I'm just getting it so there's that brush is dry it's virtually almost dry and then just taking and hitting that point and just keeping your brush and using keeping your fingers at the midpoint of the brush so you have complete control so you you j it's almost like you have the shakes <laughs> and you can hit those high points see how I hit that high point but didn't take away from his ear at all that is what we call a dry brush and you can actually if it's done right this is a rounded area but there is a slight edge up top here and you can see you can see right there just by dry brushing it you're getting more of a the, to see the detail in the wood so that's when I talk about dry brushing that's what we'll do and I'll go over this 9,000 times during the series always wash your brush properly like I spoke about and dry off your brush make sure you get all that paint off never leave your brush in there uh, if you remember when we went to the store I talked about going and getting yourself something that you can actually sit your brush up like that if you do this you're gonna get a curvature and then you're gonna lose control remember the most important thing about painting is you having the control to control the brush don't let the brush control you all right just a rehash so hopefully we saw that okay bad dry brush good dry brush very good dry brush okay so now we have our bows in here and I'm gonna show you how to thin paints down and it's a very very simple thing and I'm actually gonna do it on here because again like I told you in the beginning the plastic actually will help us out here so I'm just gonna get myself my nice little brush here and I'm gonna put a little water down right there then always shake your paints really good we're gonna use a Kador blue which I think that's the color I'm gonna use for these capes and we're gonna open that up and we're gonna take a little bit out mix it in there you can see I'm mixing it in let me just uh, zoom that in there I'm going to take a little bit more, mix it in there, and you can see it's sitting up very, very nice on, on this laminate. I'm going to close the lid. Make sure you close the lid of your paints at all times. Mix that together, and then we're going to grab our boy here. All right. And we're going to grab some of the paint here. Let's get it in the range here and we're going to paint over our bosun and you can see nice strokes you can see where the cape goes all the way up it's all through here and you can see that that some of the black is still coming through why because the paints nice and thin I'm not losing any of the detail And that's the key right there, is not to lose any of the detail. And this is perfect because we are painting our, our boy from Rum and Bones, which is what we're going to be working on this week anyways. Nice and easy. In through here. 
making sure that we cover everything there not to get a sash now again if you look you can see the black coming through but we can do a second coat because we thin it out always take a little bit of water make sure it's nice and thin it's better to be thin let me see if I'm okay I'm in the camera here and I'll zoom in on this guy a little bit more so you guys can see him I am just going to make sure that because my eyes are horrific that we are going to get every area that we need to tip of the jacket get in there and look how I'm working I'm working out into an area now we don't have to worry about this we can actually be messy with this part because all the other colors that are going to go on are just going to go over and drown this out anyways but we're using this coat as an example and when I show you these guys you'll understand exactly what I am going after here so the lapel here down into the arm down into the collar I, I mean the, the cuff link which is also blue from what I saw up around his neck and don't worry about getting it on his head because we're going to be painting over his head and that is how we're going to achieve his coat now we're going to highlight this and I'm going to go into detail about this but you can see it's nice and thin on here you see how easy that was to get that coat done you're going to let that dry and then we'll go over another coat of it. You don't want to put on your paint too thick because what happens is when we go to highlight and bring out that coat, you're going to lose the detail because if you put it too thick, you start losing these lines and details in here and we don't want to do that. and you can see that I'm just taking my time I'm not worried about getting the paint anywhere if I get it on the bone here it doesn't matter because I'm gonna be painting over that and that's not a big deal and we're you know the main thing is take your time have a good grip make sure that you're able to put both elbows on the table this is one time when it's okay your mom will let you put your elbows on your table it'll give you good balance now I've got tremendously uh, let's back out here very very big hands I'm not a small man at all um, but I'm able to take and I feel that I have more control instead of sticking it you, I, some people could take the muddy putty and stick it on here I can actually show that to you let's get this brush dry never leave the brush in there always dry the brush I mean uh, clean the brush dry your brush wash your brush again and dry your brush and look how easy this cleans up boom that's why I like using this stuff sometimes I use this more for a palette than I do anything else so as you can see the bosun we actually that actually coat looks very very nice I'm very happy with that and you don't have to be too neat with it because when we start filling in all the detail and you'll see what I'm talking about this guy will come out perfectly so there you go that's how you water down your paint and get a nice thin coat on there let's move on to the next step now we're going to talk about washes but let's talk about control okay um, some people like to hold the model into their hands that's me I'm a hold mo the model into my hands guy but another people like to get as much control as they can and a way to do that is you can put a little muddy putty on the bottom put it on top of a paint container that you're not using and you can have complete control by turning here you can even do it on the Americana nice big container of paint take a little bit of 
muddy putty or clay or whatever works for you and look you're able to turn him completely around while you paint and some people like this technique because it gives you the control that you can turn this and control your brush so that's an idea wherever you get the control of the best and works for you that's what you should use now next thing we're going to talk about we've got this guy who's just painted white nothing to him I talk a lot about washes washes to me or inks or whatever you want to call them are very very important um, they tend to be a very very big part of my um, my paint schemes because they all they get into the recesses and I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about with this particular little model now he's not you know he's a little cheap model I found uh, I just threw a very very poor coat of white on him because we're gonna take what we call Newell oil it's a shade and they have different shades this is the black shade they have brown shades they have flesh shades they have green blue red shades and you'll hear me mention these throughout the series that uh, that we're going to do for each game i'll be naming off the different types of shades that we're going to be using for it this here um i'm going to put over this white just to show you how i like the shade some people even call this liquid talent <laughs> I always like that one. Doesn't matter what brush you use, just have one that that you can you can get a good amount of this on. Close this up, shake it really really well, and pop the cap off. Get a good amount on your brush, and then take your figure and start applying it moving it around getting it inside the recesses and you can see what happens here now of course this isn't a perfectly figure to do this on but it's going to give me what I want from it and that's get a little more paint a little more ink on here now watch this you see how it it fills in and it starts giving filling in the recesses giving the model depth and that's a lot of times what we want to do it starts shades bring out what you've already painted now this was just painted a very very poor white Ugh, this brush I should have picked a little bit better brush for this but with a proper amount of shade just washing it in there moving it around see how I move it around now all of a sudden you can see particularly on his back particularly on his back how by just moving it in and into the recesses all of a sudden that very dull white now all of a sudden looks a little battle worn and this is how you get get some of these paints into the recesses I, I mean the, these inks into the recesses and it brings out the detail which is a main reason why I say that you water down your paints properly you apply your paints and that way when you put your inks on and you could see this is a very poor poor model by the way this is not a heavily detailed model but we were able to bring out whatever whatever molds or sculpts it has and able to move that that wash in there to give to give it some sort of depth if you notice and that's a perfect example of it and yeah, the, the front parts just didn't come out the way I had hoped that's how bad this model is I don't even know what this is from but I, I you know I know this is a very very cheap sculpture but even in that said you know 
you could see here where the shade is sitting it brings out that cloth and the armor and the recesses of the chain here how it sits within there it brings out this now you would you know you would take and go over it a little bit to bring that out you want to go remember how we were talking about dry brushing you could even dry brush over this once it dried and very lightly hit the ray spot so now that color if we went over with a white it would give it such a vibrant depth and 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 be you know really give you a look that really something you'll really really enjoy so you'll hear me talk about washes through the series as well and that is particularly how you're going to want to do that so I think we covered pretty much everything in this episode that we so wanted to cover. It. We showed some of the techniques, showed how to properly spray paint and get everything all primed up. Uh, we even started working on our bosun by thinning out paints and we talked about some of the techniques that we will be talking out throughout this series. These are some of the basic ones and if you have your wooden blocks please practice on them. And send me your pictures, that would be great. We can compile them and I'd love to show them off here. Uh, next next uh, segment, we'll have the Bone Devils all taken care of and painted up, and we'll showcase them on Board Game Breakfast. And then we'll be back here to do a detailed, extended look on how we painted them step by step, each crew member. So, I hope to see you on Board Game Breakfast, and I hope to also see you here on the 101 Extended. Until next time. This is Rob Warren. Don't forget to leave your comments below. I appreciate all your comments and questions, and I try to answer them as we go. So we'll see you soon. We'll see you next time, and thanks so much for watching. Bye now.